What's up guys, in this video we're going to be making some game passes for our tycoon in Roblox Studio. Anyways, there are a few things we need to fix from the last episode that I forgot to go over or I messed up on that we need to fix in this video before we get to making any of those game passes. So what we want to do is let's open up our tycoons folder in the workspace and then open up our save data script. Now inside of our save data function inside of our data script, we need to go down to about right here before we actually store all of the objects names into the tycoon data table. Let's just make a new line right here and we're going to say spawn function just like this. This is pretty much exactly as it sounds. We're just spawning a function that we're going to be executing now. So now we need to check by saying local success comma error, and this will be equal to another P call. And this P call will have a function because it's a protected function. And then we're gonna say data store set async, and then we're going to grab our player.userid and then we're going to concatenate a string with their user id so we're going to say dot dot quotation marks and then we're going to say dash and then cache just like that next we put a comma after the cache and then we can say player dot leader stats dot cache dot value so what this is doing is it's finding our player's user id right here then we're giving it a new name basically with the cache on the side of it because we are already using their player.userid for the tycoon data and we want to make sure that we're saving their cache also. And the thing that we're saving is their player.leaderstats.cache.value. Next, after our P call right here, we just want to say if not success, then we're going to warn the server error. So the success is if everything went perfectly, there were no errors when it was saving at all, but the error is when everything did not go right, there was an error, something's wrong. And so if there was not a success in our data saving right here, then we're going to warn the server whatever our error was. That's all we have to do for our save data script. Let's go down here to our load data or our claim tycoon function. And right up here under our tycoon data variable, we want to say local cache data, just like that. Next, we'll drop down a few more lines and we're going to say spawn function once again, just like this. We're going to grab another P call. So we're going to say local success comma error will be equal to P call function just like this. And then we're going to say cache data will be equal to data store get async this time instead of set async. And this will be our tycoon owner dot user ID and then our dot dot quotation marks dash and then cache just like that and we don't need to put the comma and the players leader stats dot cache dot value after that because we're just getting all the data that is inside of our tycoon owners user id next we can do our same if not success then we're going to warn our error but if it was a success and we have cache data then we're going to grab our tycoon owner dot leader stats dot cache dot value and this is going to be equal to cache data just like that. So this is going to load in the player's cache whenever they join, well not whenever they join, but whenever they claim a tycoon. So now since this is the first time playing with the new changes that we made, we are going to have no data, but that's just because I accidentally swapped up my data store name with something else. So I'm not gonna have any tycoon data at the moment. And so let's go ahead and make some new tycoon data. Let's collect the cache right here. Now we've got cache and we've got a dropper. Let's click on stop. We click on play here, just like this. Now loading our tycoon again, you can see I have 70 cache now. I have my first dropper and I can feel free to buy the next colorizer if I would like to. The next thing that I noticed is that whenever we claim our tycoon, our name doesn't actually appear up here for the entire time that we have the tycoon claimed. So let's go ahead and fix that as well. Inside of our save data script one more time, we need to go all the way down here to about right here. So now we're gonna drop a line right before our tycoon gets destroyed. And we're gonna say tycoon clone dot main items. If you open up your tycoon model in the explorer, it makes it a little easier to kind of follow along because we're getting our cat, our owner door, I mean. So we're gonna say tycoon clone dot main items dot owner door. Let's open up the owner door now. And then we're going to say dot title 
dot surface GUI and then open that one up and dot text label and then we can say dot text and this will be equal to we can copy this line right here without the tycoon clone and we can say our tycoon not our tycoon clone and then we can paste that so we'll say our tycoon dot main items dot owner door dot all that stuff and so that'll basically set the text of our surface gui inside of our owner door to the exact same as it was before buying so what this line is doing is that whenever we actually load in the new tycoon it is basically grabbing the text from the old tycoon's owner door and slapping it around to the new text inside of our brand new tycoon so now that we have that fixed and we are having our cache saved let's go and make our game passes so on the Roblox website, all that you're going to want to do is click on create right here, and this will take you over to the dashboard. Now, what you want to do in the dashboard is once all of your experiences load in, you want to click on your tycoon game, the experience that you're working on at the moment. Click on that, and this will take you to kind of the overview of your game so far. And what we want to do is over on the left, click on associated items. The associated item holds everything like developer products, game passes, and badges and everything. So we want to click on passes because we're going to be making some game passes. Now a little button will appear right here because we haven't created any passes just yet. And it will say create a pass. Now when we click on create a pass, it's going to ask us for an image, a name, and a description. You can feel free taking your time for the image, the name, the description. I'm just going to grab a random image off my computer for now. Alright, so I just upload this little picture of a star for the image. And now the name is going to be whatever we want to name it. Let's start off with a 2 times cash game pass. Just like that. And so this is going to basically give the player two times cash whenever they collect their cash. You can give it a cool description, like subscribe to Rusty Silly Band, and then click on create patch. So now as you can see, our pass will show up right here, and we need to click on it now. Go over to sales on the left and then turn on item for sale now that our game pass is for sale we can give it a price in robux you can make this whatever price you want to i recommend anywhere from 50 to 100 robux just because it is only a two times cash game pass it isn't that great i'm just gonna put mine at 50 because it's a decent price i guess we can click on save changes and now we can go back to roblox studio so back in roblox studio let's go over inside of our tycoon inside of our tycoon model and then open up our scripts folder let's go ahead and click on our core script open that up now there are a few things we need to get up here the first thing is going to be marketplace service so we're going to say local marketplace service will be equal to game get service marketplace service now marketplace service is the service roblox uses to handle everything like dev products game passes stuff like that and things that can be monetized in your game and so we're going to be using this to make sure that we can check if the player owns a game pass if we can prompt the player to buy a game pass all the stuff like that now let's scroll all the way down here to our cash collector script right here. And right before it says debounce equals to true, we're going to do a little if statement right here. We're going to say if marketplace service player. So now we're going to say if marketplace service colon user owns game pass async. And then we're going to grab this player right here. We're going to say player dot user id and we put a comma right here and here's where we get to find our game pass id the game pass as id is what we're going to be using in order to determine which game pass we want the player to buy so for this we need to go back to roblox's website now that we're on roblox's website as you can see up here in the url bar this might be different for you but it has the experience id right here which is this experience id which is right after the experience but then it's got the pass id which is right here now what we want to do is if you double click right here or you can hover and click and hold your mouse to select all these numbers you can right click and then click on copy back in roblox studio you can press ctrl v to paste your game pass id right there and then we do a then so if 
the player owns this Game Pass ID, what we're going to be doing is that we can basically copy all the stuff inside of here, except instead of where it says player.leaderstats.cash.value equals to player.leaderstats.cash.value plus values.money.value.value, we just want to say times two right here at the end. This way it'll give them whatever the values.moneyValue.value is times two, so let's say the money value's value is 50, then times two would be 100. So that's what they will give to the player. After that, we do the same thing as before by setting the value back down to zero and all of this stuff. And then change it, instead of changing this to an end, we just want to say else. And then we can cut all of this stuff right here and paste it right in between this else and this end right here. So we're checking that if they own the game pass, then we're going to go ahead and give them double the cash. Otherwise, we're just going to give them the normal amount of cash. Now let's go ahead and make a Game Pass button for our Tycoon. So let's go ahead and grab a button right here. I'm just going to grab the dropper button and let's go ahead and duplicate it with Control and D and then move it over. I'm just going to move it right in front of this mesh dropper right here. And now we can get to editing this button a little bit. So instead of naming it to dropper button, I'm just going to rename it to game pass button, but I'd recommend changing it to the name of whatever item that you're going to be selling with it. Next, let's open up this thing right here. And I think I duplicated the wrong button because this one doesn't have a dependency value inside of it, but we can just duplicate the object value and rename it to dependency, just like that. And then we're going to duplicate the price, which is an int value right here, and we're going to name this to Game Pass ID. Now with our Game Pass ID, we can go down into the value and, uh, and paste. paste our Game Pass ID which if you don't have any more, you can go back and recopy it. And then we set the object to whatever object we want to purchase. I'm just going to say mesh dropper. I think that's what the name of it is. Yep, mesh dropper. And the dependency we can keep on dropper just like that. A common thing I've seen people do is change the brick color of the button over to something like an orange or so or a gold and then we can remove the script that will change the color of the button inside of it and you can adjust the text of the actual button right here. Let's change it to something like mesh dropper and then this will be capital R something 50 robux something like that and you can change the text color to like a gold or something if you'd like to just let someone know this is a very special button anyways that's all that we have to do for our game pass button so let's go back into our core script real quick now let's go all the way down to our buttons right here so now instead of saying if player find first child leader stats dot cash dot value right above that we want to say if marketplace service we want to check if v find first child game pass id which is the game pass id value we just put inside of our button and v dot game pass dot value is greater than or equal to one then so now we're going to say if marketplace service user owns game pass async and then we're going to choose our player just like that and then comma and here's where we get to put our game pass id so back onto the roblox website you want to go click on back to associated items right here and then click on passes one more time and we can click on create a pass now here's where we create another game pass and this is going to be for whatever dropper or item you want to purchase let's say since mine's a mesh dropper i want to have a picture of my mesh dropper on there or let's say you were making a golden dropper or something. You'd want a picture of your golden dropper and the name golden dropper or something like that so the player knows this is going to be a very good dropper. Once again, find an image on your computer. I'm going to be using this star with a smiley face on it because I think it's a pretty cool star. And then we can go ahead and change the name to mesh dropper just like this. And the description, once again, you can change this to whatever you want to. Make sure it is descriptive about the actual Game Pass, though. Let's click on Create Pass one more time. Click on your Mesh Dropper Pass now. Go over to Sales. 
turn on item for sale and let's increase the price for game pass buttons i'd recommend anything from 25 robux to like 200 or so depending on what your item is for a mesh dropper i'm just gonna be doing 25 because it is only one mesh dropper i'm gonna click on save changes now and once again up here in the url bar you want to copy the game pass id just like that right click press on copy and then we can go back to roblox studio so if marketplace service user owns game pass async player comma and then our game pass id then what we're going to go ahead and do is we can just copy all of this down here and just put it right inside of there and then we can take out this player.leerstats.cash.value minus equals to v.price.value because we don't need to take away the player's money because they're already buying it with robux and by the way inside of our button we can get rid of the price value inside of it else right here we say just in case the player does not own the game pass async we go ahead and say marketplace service and this is going to say prompt game pass purchase we're going to take the player and then our game pass id once again which we can take from right up here just paste that right into here so basically if the player does not own the game pass just yet we're going to prompt them to buy the game pass just in case they want to now here where it says if v find first child game pass we want to press enter right here to drop a new line and we want to say else if now with our else if right here, so if our V does not have the game pass ID, we can copy all of this right here. So now we want to copy this top line. You can cut this top line right here and paste it right in front of the else if. And you might have to get rid of a bit of the spaces behind it. So now instead of saying if the V has a game pass ID, which is the button, then we're going to check else if the player has the leader stats cash value which is higher than the price of the button now we can get rid of this if statement because we're no longer using it and we can copy this else right here i believe and just paste it right inside of here next we have an extra end that we can get rid of and that is all good to go so what's happening is that if our button has the game pass id value and its value is higher than one or equal to it and then we're going to check if the player owns the game pass which if they do then we're going to go ahead and change the object's parent to the actual purchases folder otherwise if they do not own it we're going to prompt them to buy the game pass which they can either accept or refuse otherwise if the game if the button does not have the game pass id value inside of it then we're going to check if they have enough money to buy the button if they do we're going to do all the same stuff and if they do not have enough money we're going to play the error sound and one more thing real quick i'm just going to change the name of my data store real quick to my tycoon data store all right i made a mistake i accidentally said v.gamepass.value we want to say v.gamepassid.value so one more mistake i made is it player.userid and not just player let's go ahead and click on play playing the tycoon by the first dropper here and let's buy our next mesh dropper and since we own the game pass already because we were the ones that made it we can go ahead and buy this because we have the game pass as you can see that popped right into place let's go ahead and claim the cash right now run over here by the colorizer and we have game passes now and as you saw that since i have so much money already is because we have the times two game pass as well so 130 times 2 is 260 which you just saw i got right there we can see it on 50 times 100 so you can see i got 100 cash from that which is very very cool so we've got the times two game pass game pass we've got the buttons game pass i think that's where i'm going to be ending today's video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video just as much as i did make sure you like subscribe and comment down below i'll see you later